Dan Campbell on Kayvon Thibodeau, one of the top pass rushers in this draft class and holding the second overall pick. Said Campbell on Thibodeau, hey, listen, he's an explosive athlete. He's a playmaker. You know, he's got a good quick first step. I mean, he's something else. He's pretty special on tape. As to the number two pick, they want a guy, according to Campbell, who can come in and day one, he's a starter. That's really what you're trying to acquire. You'd like to think by the time you hit your first game, that player is starting for you and he's going to be able to produce. Yeah, in today's NFL, you can't spend the second overall pick on a project, on a guy that's going to sit on the bench for two or three years. Well, I guess you can. But for the for the Lions right now, with what they need, they don't need somebody who's not going to play. They need somebody who's going to be ready to go. And they're in a good spot. Now, this year, it's not like there's a small handful of, of potential Hall of Famers. You could maybe get as good of a player farther down, and maybe they would like to trade down if an opportunity arises. But, uh, yeah, go get a player who's going to make a difference for you right away. You just better hope you you pick right when the time comes, Peter. You know, the way I look at this is there's no question that Kayvon Thibodeau is highly regarded by a lot of teams. And he has the kind of skill set that absolutely day one he could step in and be a really good player. Um, But I do think there's something about taking a player who has some scars on his resume, which honestly, Mike, you have to determine what you think about his level of effort on every play. That's the biggest question about him right now. And... You know, not necessarily, and I went back over the weekend. I think he played 30 college games, and in 16 of the games, he had no sacks and and uh, uh, whatever. But you have to determine his total effort and whether you think that he's given enough effort to be to justify the second pick in the draft with him. Because I think there's no question that his production in the NFL on day one could be very, very strong. Um, I I just, that, what I hear, especially from evaluators, from uh, from the guys who do this for a living um, in the media, like Daniel Jeremiah and those guys, is that, you know, you really have to watch the tape carefully uh, on Kayvon Thibodeau. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to watch the tape on, like, Sauce Gardner, um, you know, the corner from Cincinnati. I mean, it, when you do watch the tape, you see that, you know, this guy is pretty much all effort all the time. So we'll see what impact that has on Kayvon Thibodeau. Well, and the one great unknown that applies every year, every draft clack, every prospect, especially the ones top of the stack, you don't know what they're going to do at the next level until they get there because they've never experienced football with that intensity, with that level of competition, with everything you have to deal with all the time. Some guys rise up. Some guys hit that ceiling. You just don't know until you get there. And I think the warning signs are if you see a guy who isn't playing hard all the time at the college level, it's going to have to require him to muster even more will at the NFL level to bring it all the time because it's harder at the NFL level. But some guys rise to that challenge. You just don't know until they get there. And for some guys like Thibodeau, Peter, if he falls some, that lights a fire that otherwise wouldn't have been ignited. I think of the Michael Thomas effect. Michael Thomas landed in round two, and he was more motivated than ever to go to the NFL and be a great player. I think where a guy gets picked has a huge influence on what kind of effort he's going to give because he may emerge from that process with a gigantic chip on his shoulder. And, you know, that has been the motivating force for a lot of people. Look, Tom Brady made a documentary about it, or or ESPN made a documentary about it with Tom Brady. So I don't think that is a foreign concept. And maybe that will be enough. I mean, look, in the unlikely event that Kayvon Thibodeau lands outside the top 10, I guarantee you, he's already said I'm the best player in this draft. So I guarantee you that Kayvon Thibodeau Uh, will be uber motivated uh, if he's the 16th pick in the draft. Which, look, we all think that's unlikely, but you you never know. Because I think, especially this year, this is a very strange year in the draft. And I think this year, 
<clears throat> there are so many people who view that they, they're not going to take a risk. They'd rather trade out of the risky area of the draft, you know, the top 12 to 15, and they'd rather have more picks, you know, down lower and just guys who don't quite have the resume. <clears throat> but Mike, the most interesting thing that was said to me about this draft by somebody in the league is, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase, is that one team's 15th player will be another team's 60th player. And I think you're going to see that this year. You're going to see a lot of gasps when some guys get picked a lot higher than some people thought they should and when some guys get picked a lot lower than people thought they should. And with Thibodeau, one theory I have is if he's there at number nine, I could see the Seahawks taking advantage of the opportunity to trade down with someone who really loves him and wants to snag him before he falls out of the top 10 because uh, the Seahawks are going to be one of those teams, I think, looking to stockpile picks as they try to rebuild their roster. But we got three more weeks to talk about the draft. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.